nowadays I spend most of my work days working from home as a freelance programmer or consultant. I'm developing apps for the Apple ecosystem for my freelance customers and myself. I wrote the first lines of code in a programming language called BASIC. It was built in on my first computer, a ZX Spectrum clone. Games felt way more interesting than programming and I didn't spend any time going deeper into the programming niche. Even later, when I started to study computer science, I wasn't sure that I would like to be a programmer. I learned a bit of everything, HTML, C, Java, but I didn't see myself programming. After the first year of IT studies, I switched jobs and started working in IT as a field engineer in payment industry. I started moving up in a corporate career letter and switched to a product management role a few years later. No, I was working with the software developers, but I still didn't see that I could like to code. Everything changed when iPhone was released. It wasn't easy to get the first iPhone working in Latvia, but it was doable through jailbreaking with possibility to brick it in the process. I didn't develop any app for original or following iPhones, but... I will be pleased to hang it on the wall, because that was really a game changer. I started to learn iOS development when iOS 4 was around, that was back in the iPhone 4 times. Objective-C wasn't the most challenging roadblock to the App Store, I learned it from the Big Nerd Range book and even released one app in the App Store. The hardest part for me was app design. Back in iOS 4, to iOS 6 that was skeuomorphism at its peak, I didn't see how I could get from the basic UI kit app that I learned to build to crazy designs from the popular apps in the App Store. Back then I became busy with the career in product management and put iOS development aside. Everything was changing for me when iOS 7 was released with the iPhone 5S, but it was supported back to iPhone 4 as well. So design was already an easier problem to solve because that flat design and end of skeuomorphism. Fast forward to the summer of 2014 when Swift was released, I decided to give it one more try to iOS development. In 2014-2015, I learned an iOS development and started to generate some revenue from indie apps. I had some success, but it was way too little money to pay our family bills, so I decided to give it a try to freelancing. And in 2016 I already had to decide what I would like to do, start to decline iOS freelancing work or drop my corporate career. Guess you know the answer, what did I do? Since then I have been living my dream life. I like the tech industry, but I didn't enjoy working in corporate management role, also I would not like to work as a programmer in a big tech company. Probably I'm not even a good programmer, because I don't care how compiler works, I don't care about fancy software development te techniques or or frameworks. I just want to build apps and do business on top of that. So working as consultant for small or medium sized teams and my own app development is perfect fit for me. And I'm thankful for Apple to making that possible for many more developers and me. I'm quite often asked which niche in the tech is most profitable. So I hope that this story helps convince you to find something that you like to do and will be happy to continue working on in 3, 5 or even more years after getting into tech career. For me, that is mobile app development. If you need advice how to get into the tech career, check out that playlist. And yeah, thank you for watching. See you on next one. Bye bye.